you know you're going to retire soon and you are fed up with the way things are in the United States and you want to move abroad. You want to retire and go somewhere like Ecuador, like I did. But what if you have a spouse or a partner or a boyfriend and girlfriend that is, is not on board with you going to another country? When a partner is not on board, this is the subject of a, a subject, a topic for good discussion. As soon as I come back, we'll get started on it. Hey. Hello there. I got an email from a friend of mine, Jeff. I like to, I, I refer to all my subscribers as my friends, okay? Some of you are great friends I've developed good relationships with, and I wouldn't want to be alive without you, you know? And then, of course, I've met some that, that went the exact opposite direction. So, anyway, I got an email from a friend named Jeff. It's a good, good question. It's the first time somebody's brought this up, and here it goes. I'm going to read it to you as quick as I can. I don't want to bore anybody. Hey, Don, I'm struggling a bit with an issue I have not yet seen addressed in your body of work, so I thought I would run it by you for your take on it. See, I like this. He wants my take on it. You notice he's not asking for my advice because you know how I feel about advice. It has to do with how I can best convince a lover, a partner, or a spouse to join me in my move abroad. I realize you first traveled to Ecuador on your own, talking about me, without a wife or girlfriend, and that you have since met a special someone in Montes. So if this lies outside your knowledge of expertise, exper <laughs> expertise, no problem. As for me, though, I have a special someone already here in the States, a woman I have known for decades, and I have hoped she and I would both share in the experience of living abroad, unfortunately, I don't know a winning approach to making the case. I must say I've become quite the expert on what pro approaches not to take. For example, among the things not to do are to put pressure on your lover or to do anything that would inspire a reflex in the opposite direction. Also, it's important not to oversell the virtues of a new country or to come off like you're making a pitch. The techniques of a television evangelist or used car salesperson will not play well. So in short, when it comes to making the case, less is more. I agree with that. I suppose finally I need to realize that what's best for me may well not always or even often be what's best for my partner, and this conflict is a tough road to travel. Anyway, having now established a few things a few of the things that will not be effective, do you have any thoughts on just what might work? Yes, I do. <laughs> In addition to offering your ideas, you could also pose the same question to your audience. Perhaps some of them have experience with this too, and they could share it in the comment section. Of course, I don't expect that the same tactics will work with everyone, but some suggestions or guidelines might still be useful. I have traveled abroad myself on several occasions and I'm resourceful enough that I can make a good life in Ecuador or anywhere else, even without a partner. I definitely like having my own space. At the same time, it's good to have someone with whom to share the joys and trials of a major life change such as this. How might you go about this if you were now in my shoes? On a closing note, I don't know if Christmas is a holiday you celebrate some people are disenchanted with it, but if you do observe it, I hope you have a very, have a Merry Christmas. And here's hoping also that 2023 will be a great year for us all. So, thanks, Jeff. I mean, this is a great thing to talk about because, you know, when, when I met my girlfriend that I had in the States before I came here, uh, I'll just cut right to the chase and say, but off the bat, we broke up a couple of years ago before I came here. And, but we, we remained friends and we stayed in touch and she, you know, knew, well, she knew from the minute that we met in 2010 
that I was thinking about moving abroad reti after retirement. So I planted that seed right up front, you know. That's not possible for everybody because a lot of people are together and have, are together for years and the husband wakes up one day and thinks about, you know, going somewhere else or the wife does. And it's something that you both have to agree on and discuss. With me and Jeannie, Jeannie was my girlfriend in the States, we talked about it a lot and she knew when, I, when it came to, to me saying, I've made my mind up, this is years later, I made up my mind that I'm going to retire from my job, I'm going to sell my condo and I'm sell everything I own and I'm going to Ecuador. She, it was no shock to her. It, she took it just fine. <clears throat> I came <clears throat> to find out later, well, fast forward a little bit. After I came here, a few months after I came here, we, we, we kept in touch. I called her a couple of times a month and we kept in touch with each other. And, but after I was here a few months, she, Jeannie passed away. It was rather sudden, it was unexpected, but I kind of, I knew she was sick and she had a lengthy illness and she just couldn't survive it. She was uh, to the point where, well, she had COPD and, and it just basically just took over her whole body and just her, all of her organs broke down and she succumbed to it. And I found out later from another relative or a mutual friend not a relative, a mutual friend, that she was she was okay with the fact that we broke up a couple of years before I moved here because we kept in touch. We even went out occasionally and, 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 and we even visited with neighbors, you know, mutually together. But I found out later that she was extremely heartbroken that I left the United States. And she just like, I just left her period and she just felt like that that was it you know and so she was heartbroken but we all of us know that she she had another illness and and that's what happened to her so the whole point of this is to make sure you keep the lines of communication open with your partners about what you want to do moving this is a major thing this is a major life event you know I say, you know, I, and you know how I feel about giving advice. I, I don't like giving advice, but I, in this case, I can give some based on my experience. And, you know, I, I've said this many times. Rather than getting rid of everything and, you know, and then just packing suitcase and come to Ecuador, slow down a little bit. Put your stuff in storage. Put it in there for a year. You know, get you a long-term contract on a storage place, a climate-controlled space where you stuff would be protected, kept safe from bugs and the heat and cold and all that stuff. You know what I'm saying? And then make your move because there's a good chance you're going to get here and you're not going to like it. That happens to a lot of people, folks. So keep that line of communication open. Always don't oversell it. I mean, because, you know, everybody, you, you, everybody that I'm talking to has their own relationship with their partner. And you know how to deal with each other. One thing that you could do, Jeff, if, you, if your partner wasn't open to it, is you could come by yourself. You know, it's so easy to keep uh, in communication with each other with WhatsApp and all, you know, Internet uh, IPT or, or I, voice over IP communications, it's so easy to keep in touch and it's so cheap to keep in touch. And you could come and explore, you know, and, and then you could continue to keep in touch with your partner and maybe convince her, show her pictures, show her do videos like I'm doing and show her, show her what it's like, show her or him, whatever the case may be. Because I'm speaking to not just Jeff, but to everybody that's that's in a relationship, whether you're male or female, and you have a husband or a wife, it doesn't matter. You know, if if the other partner is not open to it, 
And if she's okay with you coming by yourself, by all means, do it. And then, then you got a story to tell. Then you can go back and say, look, this, this is what it's like. See, I didn't have a winning approach either. I, I just talked to Jeannie and just, you know, she, she knew that I was enthused about leaving the country. Not, she knew that I wasn't running from something, and I wasn't. I, I didn't run from anything. I left because I wanted to find a place to go that was more affordable for me to live in with my retirement. And, and I wanted to, to enjoy the sense of adventure and, and explore. And, and I still will continue to do that. There's nothing to say that I'm going to stay right here in Ecuador. I may go somewhere else. You see, I, I'm kind of in the same boat you are now because I came here and now I have a girlfriend here that I love very much. And if I decide to go somewhere else because I can't handle the earthquakes or the noise or whatever, whatever it is here that, you know, runs me away, I have to deal with the emotions of being in love with a beautiful woman and, and I have to figure out what I'm going to do about that. So it's tough. I, I talk to her, even now I talk to her about the possibility of me leaving and going to, some, to another country. I, I just say, you know, the whole key, the winning approach is open communication. Don't oversell it, like you said, don't oversell it, but don't let her forget it. Be serious about it. I've been accused many times in my life of, oh, you're not serious about that. You're not going to do that. You say you're going to do that, but you don't. You know, I did that a lot. I've waffled so many times, I've lost count. So I'm curious to know what other people think. And you know, I'm curious to know what other people in this audience think, this channel. What did, what did you guys do? There are a lot of couples that come here. Lots and lots of couples. But there's a lot of single people. There's a lot of single guys and single girls that come here. I know a girl and a husband that come here and her husband spends more time back in the States, but, but he's in business and he's working. So they, that's what they do. I have another good friend here that, whose husband stayed behind in the States to finish off a, a tenureship at a university so that, you know, they could get full benefits when they retire. Everybody's story is different. Everybody's situation is different. So I'm, 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 I would like to hear from some of you, some of you and what you thought, what thought process you went through and how you convinced your partner to make this move. It's a major thing. I'm, I can't believe that I hadn't thought about it before. I knew that Jeannie wasn't going to come here with me because she was a caregiver for her brother and she couldn't leave him. I actually thought about bringing him with us, but it just wasn't feasible. I ended up coming here by myself and, and you know, and just did the best I could. And, and unfortunately, uh, Jeannie passed on. What do you think, folks? It's, it's, a, it's something to really think about. You really have to have uh, that discussion with your partner. There are some partners that won't come here together as a couple. So anyway, I want to take this moment to thank everybody who wrote to me and, and gave me birth, or Christmas and New Year's wishes. It's hard to respond to everybody. I want you to know that I appreciate that and I love you guys every, very much and I wish the best and the same for you. Uh, Christmas is over with. I had a great Christmas and I hope you did too and I'm looking forward to a new year and by the by the new year I will hopefully will have my car and I will get out of this apartment and start producing some some videos from remote locations and really start showing what it's like to live in Ecuador. So Merry Christmas, Happy New Year to everybody and thank you so much Jeff for this email. And I hope that this helps. And I'll see you on the next one. Okay? Ciao, ciao.